Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm O'Connor Whiteley, bringing you psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. You are welcome to find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and you can get your free 8 psychology book box set at connorwhitely.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 37 of the Psychology World Podcast with me Connor Whiteley and today's episode is on how racism affects a physical affects physical health and it's the 6th of June 2020 as I record this. So moving on to the psychology news section, we're reading from the British Psychological Society Research Digest and I can happily say that this is the 500th newsletter so I'm very happy for the British Psychological Society and in the personal update I'm gonna, even if you don't want to listen to the main episode, so I'd strongly encourage you to please listen up to it because the personal that I think you'll all find interesting and useful. So now we're moving on to the psychology news section. So women are more likely than men to, to be told white lies in performance interviews. And so it reads, it's not uncommon to tell a white lie at work. Believe me, it is not, it's not uncommon in the slightest, even at university or in family situations. It's so not uncommon. Why you took a slightly too long lunch break? You mainly do it to get away from your boss and your peers. Or how much you have really done on that big project. God, university stories. <laughs> when white lies are socially useful, telling someone that you like what they're wearing is probably a kind of option than admitting that you hated it. <laughs> We've all been in those situations, haven't we? When it comes to performance interviews, however, white lies are less beneficial. The whole point of such overview is to help improve how someone is working and identify and mitigate potential problems. So I defeats the object. According to a new study, it's women who most often hear bear the brunt of untruthful performance for those. So there are many reasons why this can potentially happen. To be honest, it shouldn't happen, but it's probably because of the the one that keeps jumping into my mind is probably because of society's view that women are too weak and too sensitive, which is absolutely rubbish, rubbish because I I'll just bring a bit of the personal update forward. So this week it was my grandma's um, funeral and we heard her eulogy and she was such her own woman and she was so strong and so loving. So to be honest, if you're going to a white light someone because you think a woman's too weak, you're just wrong to be honest. And it's just, and it's just why wouldn't you tell them a white lie? Because some people... I'm, tr- I'm thinking of some of my mum's stories from her work, uh, from from her work, is that, well, there's this woman who's reasonably bad at her job, uh, her job, but nobody, but nobody's actually going to tell her, which I think, how can we improve, or how can they improve, and how can people learn to like her and get along with her, if they can't tell her how to improve, and how to do her job properly, and then uh, the other one that would do is, uh, parents have more synchronised patterns of brain activity, when we're together. So this sounds quite interesting. I hope you agree too. So it's an oft-repeated preposition that you can tell whether someone fancies you by their body language. If they mirror how you're standing or moving, the theory goes, they might just like you back. But romantic partners don't just have behavioural synchronicity. In some cases, they have brain-to-brain synchronicity too, which I think sounds really cool, really good. A pattern has also been observed in musicians musician sorry yeah because this was i didn't cover it in the news section but there was an article months ago way before coronavirus who actually spoke about this um yeah so um brain to brain asynchronicity is a mirroring of a neural activity between individuals or groups and according to a new study in in scientific reports such synchronicity in spouses can affect how they respond to their children so this i think is really interesting because it's just, it just emphasises why cognitive psychology is amazing and why and why the human mind is because well I don't know I don't know how to put any words but I just I just think that's so interesting just so cool so let's move on so I hope you've enjoyed the psychology news section so let's move on to the personal update so moving on to the personal update so I already like alluded to in the psychology news section then section now that it was my grandma's funeral so quite a nice service i'm not a religious person it was interesting but it's really nice that she actually wrote to run you the g so we could actually get her feelings it was like she was talking to us so that was like quite nice and that 
And the reason why I'm mentioning this is just that it might be something nice for all of us to do. So moving on to more relevant stuff. So I've got some very exciting news. Well, first of all, I've quit the first day blog posts because they take up so much time and I would rather be creating. And to be honest, something that I think is useful for everyone is definitely to develop a process. A process that, for example, I've this the first week of my new process of uh, Thursdays and Fridays are mar are book marketing days and just marketing in a general and then all the other days of the week are writing so i think this and that i'm actually quite enjoying to be honest it's a new process so well so far so far at least it's only been like the first week so the thing to take away here is trying to develop a process if you can for whatever you will whatever you need to do and that might help you in the long term so much more exciting stuff. So I've been planning the future of the blog, the blog, and I'm really quite excited about how the new blog direction is because I'm no longer going to do chapters for my books. When I've got a new release, I I will definitely do an episode based on a book topic or two. But now I'm just going to be doing articles of so psychology in the real world. So this podcast can be more useful and it will keep me learning because that's the whole point of this podcast to keep me learning keep me fresh as some people say and i think this will be a lot more enjoyable for all of you yes and it will become a bit more yeah so the podcast definitely be, be a bit more time consuming for me because i'll have to write a blog post but because i've been doing that for the first day blog post for a little while then i don't mind that to be honest too much so this week's episode is on something quite timely so how race and effects health but very excitingly yesterday i bought the online tickets for for the british psychological society conference 2020 which is online so that's a two-day online conference that should be quite interesting and i think it'd be quite good to do a podcast episode or two on it so you've got that to look forward to so if you don't want to spend the whole 18 pounds to go then i'll be reporting back on it to be honest and that I'm yes, and that I've also bought a ticket for a webinar on the psychology of entrepreneurship. So I'll definitely report back on that. If it's going to be a full episode or not, I don't know because I'm was well, I'm working on launching a new brand for books to writers, and all writers are entrepreneurs to be honest. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to split the content. So I don't know, but I'll report on that soon. So you've, yes, you've got that to look forward to. Um, well, so I, I'm just looking through my notes, uh, for my notes. Uh, and to be honest, that is it. To be honest, uh, and today's episode has been uh, sponsored by my social cultural psychology book, a second edition, because this book goes into prejudice, prejudice, and the social group and everything that ties into racism, like quite nicely. So if you want to look about more group processes and how the social group and all the different factors that can go into racism then i definitely recommend that you check it out available on all major ebook retailers and available in large print and paperback on amazon so so do you want to learn why groups behave like they do do you want to learn how groups influence us do you want to learn how our culture impacts our behavior if the answer is yes to any of those questions and more then this is the book for you as together we explore social psychology and how our group in and how our groups impact our behaviour in an engaging and easy to understand way. By the end of this book, you will have a great understanding of how our groups, culture and selves can impact our behaviour. If you like this book, then you will love my Psychology of Human Relationships second edition as well. As Paul really said, this definitely goes into a lot about racism, prejudice and social groups. If you're interested in any of those topics, as well as our attitudes and our social identities, then I strongly recommend that you check it out. So let's move on to the content of today's episode. Moving on to the content part of today's episode, I wanted to do something quite timely because of what's happening in the world. So I came across this really interesting article from Psychology Today. You can see the original article at connorwhitely.net forward slash blog. And then you can find today's episode and then it'll be at the bottom. But I wanted to show people how racism sorry racism has a very real impact on people's physical and mental health health because come on i think we all know that it does but sometimes i think it's nice just to have a definitive answer about how and this i actually found quite surprising because i didn't know the stuff i'm about to tell you in today's podcast episode so let's begin 
So when people experience racism, well, racism and whether this be a racial slur, or, well, an attack or being ganged up on with racial hatred or to be honest, any type of hatred, well, the sufferer will like faces a bodily response because the body decides to increase heart rate, breathing and blood pressure. And this is because the body triggers the stress response because that person does not know if they're going to die, to be honest, because they could be attacked, they could be beaten to death, so nobody knows what's going to happen. So this is why the body triggers the stress response, just so yes, but like, just so um, they can either run or fight back if they need it, or they can freeze it. And yes, and this is also known as the fight, flight, freeze response, or that sort of order. If this is triggered occasionally, it's not a massive problem. I mean, in terms of physical, I mean, in terms of physical health. But of course, this shouldn't. This response shouldn't be triggered anyway. But if this response is frequently tri um, triggered, then this does lead. To, this can potentially lead to a lot of health problems. For example, depression, anxiety, insomnia, and some more, such as uh, increased risk of heart attack, is is another one that I have read. So this does have a very real impact. And then each of these problems in a term creates even more problems. For example, depression can lead to worsened relationships. And to be honest, in some extreme cases, they're really unfortunate. This can increase the risk of um, suicide or a suicide um, idealization. But that we're going to, yeah, that's more about self-esteem and self-worth, which we're going to move on to now. So another negative of uh, racism and racial abuse is that it does erode a person's feeling of self-worth and self-esteem. Because if people are constantly telling you how useless you are, how dirty you are, then this will impact a person. And it's just awful. And this is quite a hard episode to do because it's simply how profound this potentially is and how damaging this is. But this is, to some extent, this is normal in society, but it really shouldn't be. As I've already said, this that does lead to potentially suicide in the long run, but nobody should have to die from this just because of the colour of their skin. So, so I know this was a short episode today, but I wanted to do something timely. And I think the thing to take away from this is that and this is that we just need to challenge it. We need to challenge ourselves whenever we think about racist faults, and we just need to challenge other people when we hear racial slurs. And it's together we're going to become a better place where we can all live happily and we can focus on the more important problems like global warming, coronavirus and yes, that and any other problems that have actual real world impacts on us because the colour of someone's skin is not a real problem and it isn't. So just accept people for who they are. If someone's black, they're black. They are equal. What makes them so different except a colour of their skin? So I hope you found today's episode useful. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the show notes, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. And if you want a free Ada book psychology box set, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.